Hello, I'm John Hammond with Indicate Technologies. Welcome and thank you for joining our webinar series on Digitize for Design and Inspection. Indicate Technologies is a leading supplier of equipment and services for additive manufacturing and precision dimensional measurement to the high technology industries of the Western United States. Recently, we have experienced exciting developments in 3D scanning technologies and the related software tools. Each installment of this series will highlight a few key aspects of what is possible with one of these new tool sets. Each 20-minute segment will present a scanner and software demonstrating a workflow for a specific result relating to reverse engineering or inspection. A few items before we get started. Please do ask questions during the webinar. Everyone's audio lines are muted right now, so use the Q&A button to submit your question. We'll respond to them at the end of the session as time allows, and we'll publish frequently asked questions after the webinar. In today's session, we'll present how to recover from a damaged boat propeller using Artex EVA handheld scanner and Geomagic DesignX software. This is a reverse engineering workflow that results in a solid model of the propeller so that it can be remanufactured without the damage. My colleague Anton Bosniaga of Artec 3D will do the scanning for us. Okay, Anton, take it away. Hello, I'm Anton with Artec 3D here at Indicate Technologies, and today we're going to take a look at reverse engineering this um, broken part with some organic uh, surfaces. So we're going to use the Artec EVA uh, 3D scanner and the Geomagic DesignX software. Uh, so the EVA, let's first take a look at the scanner. The EVA uh, is a structured light uh, 3D scanner, white light, uh, and it's normally used to scan uh, objects from around the size of a basketball to the size of a car. Um, and we're going to uh, scan this object using the scanner and then move that data into DesignX for reverse engineering, and we're going to generate a CAD file. Uh, in terms of the part, you see that it has the organic surfaces, the propellers, and that one of the propellers is broken. So we're going to focus on scanning just one of the propellers, and we're going to re reverse engineer the rest of the part just from that section. So without further ado, let's take a look at the scanning process. Uh, so here is the Artec software. We're running this in Artec Studio. Uh, you can see in the viewfinder, we can see the part. Here's the scanning process. We just point the scanner at the part that we want to scan. Uh, it takes care of all the alignments. So we don't actually have to uh, align the individual data frames manually. We can just let the computer vision system do this thing. So we're going to try to get as much of the propeller as possible. And there we go, that's that. Now we're gonna take a look at the processing for this data set real quick. Uh, so we see that the software is doing some housekeeping there for us. So we do have a fully processed real-time file. This is the real-time fusion or the real-time meshing result. Uh, that Artex Studio gives us by default. And you can see it's a pretty complete file. We could just export this uh, file, but it is uh, a file generated in real time. So it's inherently lower quality and than uh, the best that we can do. To get the best that we can do, uh, we need to use the software offline uh, to refine the result that we got. So here's the first step, the global registration step. It basically tightens up all the individual frames, all the individual views that we got. Um, into one good alignment. And here we go. Uh, now that this is complete, we can remove the table and the base. So we're going to go into our editor and use the eraser tool uh, to get rid of this data. This is so that we don't have to do this later in uh, Geomagic Design X. So 
So there we go, we've erased that. Now we just have the part. Next step, uh, we're going to actually build a model out of this file. We're going to use a process called uh, Fusion for this. This is basically meshing. It will generate an actual SOLIDWORKS uh, compatible file or an STL file, an OBJ file that we can then export um, into uh, Geomagic Design X. There we go. The file is, is being built. And then as soon as this process completes, we're going to be ready uh, to hand this over to our CAD engineer to show us um, how we actually reverse engineer this part. Almost done. And there we go. We're ready for the next step. <clears throat> Thanks, Anton. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Moody. I'm an applications engineer with 3D Systems Software. And we're going to be reversing that propeller blade that Anton scanned. We're going to be using Design X, and here you can see it looks kind of like SolidWorks. That's because we use the same parasolid kernel that SolidWorks uses. On the left-hand side here, it's uh, we have the feature tree and the model tree below it, and on the top we have tabs and ribbons holding all of our tools. So I'll go ahead and import the scan. Let's see, import. I'll take a quick look at it. It looks, yeah, they're, they are having a hard time with that propeller. Um, but it's totally manageable. So the first thing we need to do is, oh, there's another little divot. Um, the first thing we need to do is region this part. And what region is going to do is going to take a look at, uh, it's going to do a curvature-based analysis, and it's going to try and pull geometric features out of all of this, uh, out of all of the mesh. So where a cylinder is, it'll say this is a cylinder, or it should, and this area should be a cone, uh, plane, um, probably a revolution, um, maybe a freeform, uh, things like that, and it'll do that throughout the part. Then at that point, we can do a lot of different things with the regions. So, uh, yep, so here you can see I now have a revolution. I have a revolution and a cone, uh, cylinder, cylinder, so on and so forth throughout the part. Um, but it looks like I need to I need to add these regions together. So downstream, I know I'm going to be creating a surface over this, and I want to have the best surface possible. And to do that, I need to put all of these together. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to change my selection mode to paintbrush and select the areas that I want to add in. And since there's a divot there, I'm going to go ahead and skip that one. And I'm just going to combine these together. So once these are combined, it'll be a fairly nice surface that I'm that I like. I'm gonna check the back side here, and also we have that same problem. It looks like there's also another region there that I won't add in. So again, I'm just gonna select the areas that I want to combine together. Good, and then say merge. So once these are merged, then that's a very good surface for me to work on or to work with. So I'll step. I'll go to the next uh, next process. And that's going to be aligning. So I want to align this to the global origin because if I worked, if I start to reverse engineer in this orientation, it's going to be kind of difficult. And plus, I won't get to use all the views that I have here. So to do that, I'm going to go into model, and I'm going to add a vector to put the vector down the middle of this part. And I can do that with the regions that are already here and available. So I'll change my, I'll change my selection method back to line. Then I'll select the regions here that I want to use to put the vector down the middle here and here and actually since this has got a little thing here probably not this one delete get rid of that then I'll change, oh, I'll make sure my method is on revolving axis and I'll preview that that looks good, looks, looks like what I'm looking for And then I also need to add a clocking plane in here somewhere on this fin because I want this fin to be my clocking plane. So I'll go into plane, change my method to coplanar axis. This is going to be my coplanar axis and then I just need to select the underlying mesh. I'll put a point there and it puts a, puts a plane between that point and that vector. So I'll go ahead and say okay there. Now I'm ready to do an alignment. So I'll go into alignment, interactive alignment, make sure my part is selected, and then I'll go to the next step. My first option here is position. 
So I want, I want my global origin to be in this part somewhere. And I've decided that it's going to be at the, at the point where this plane and this vector meet. So I didn't generate a plane here. I'm just using the region itself. So I'll select this region. And then I'll select the vector from my feature tree on the left-hand side. There we go. And now it puts my global position right in the middle of the part. I then need to choose my y-axis. And I'll choose the vector again. And it's, uh, it's upside down, so I'll go ahead and invert that. And then I need to choose either the Z or the X axis. And I need to make that my plane 1. So I'll go ahead and choose my Z axis. And say plane 1. And now all my degrees of freedom are locked down, or all my degrees of movement are locked down. And I'll go ahead and say OK. I'll turn on my planes just to make sure I have a good alignment. I'll go normal to this top plane here and see that this is exactly where I want it to be. Cool. Now I can actually begin to reverse engineer. And since we have regions already assigned to this, I'll use those and use my uh, revolving wizard. And I'll just select some of these regions here. And instead of going in and creating a vector, a plane, a sketch, and a revolve, I'm just going to allow the software to do it for me based on these selections. So then I'll go to the next step. And it will give me, oh, that's not what I wanted it to do. Let's see, I'm going to remove this one. I'll go to the next step. So now it's given me a vector. It's given me a plane and which it's drawn a sketch on. And then it's done the revolve. So once I say OK, you'll see it populate over here on the left-hand side. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And this is editable. So if I wanted to change this, uh, this sketch to the vector that I use for my alignment, I can do that by going in and editing mesh sketch setup. I'll remove the center axis. I'll remove vector 2 and replace it with vector 1. I'll then have to do that on my revolve by going to axis and selecting vector 1. And then I'll say OK. So now we can check our we can check our reverse engineering just by going up to the deviation analysis. And basically, that, uh, that does a check between the mesh surface and the CAD object that we've created. So I'll set this to 1. That looks good. And we can see that we've done a pretty good job. Here, there's not enough data to work with, so it's excluding that. If I turn on the mesh and I, and I turn off my solid body, I can see that there's a big hole. So there's a problem there. So, now that we have this center point here, I can move on to the fins. And the way that I'm going to do this is, I'm going to get the profile of this fin, extrude it to a solid body, and then I'm going to create a couple surfaces on this face and on the back face to use as cutting tools. To start, I'm going to turn on my planes. Oops, I'm not going to turn on all of them. I don't need all of them. I'm going to turn on this top plane here. And then I'm going to go to Sketch, Mesh Sketch, and select this top plane as my base plane. Oop, hold on. So I'll go to Mesh Sketch and choose this top plane. Once I have this, I can use one of our unique tools called the Silhouette tool that will take all of this data and put it back onto the base plane. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up this bounding box a little bit. And you can see that it's now it's created this profile of the mesh. So I can take a look and see that I haven't gotten all the way to the bottom yet. So I'll go ahead and enlarge that. Now I have the entire profile of that fin. So I'll go ahead and say OK. I'll turn off my mesh. And then I can see that I need to apply. Uh, I can see now that I have a polyline. And all I need to do is apply uh, some lines and arcs or a spline. And I can do this a couple of ways. I can use the auto sketch function, which allows me to do uh, which allows which auto sketches a line, a best fit a line on there for me, or I can apply them myself. So this looks a little bit wavy. So instead of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck fit polyline, and then I'll use that pink reference line. I'll use that pink polyline as a reference. Good. So I'll hit enter. Now I might need to adjust this a bit. No, it's right there is good. I need to add a tangency between these two splines. Add a tangency. Let me just take a quick look here. 
That looks pretty good. Okay, now I need to close this sketch loop. And to do that, I want this fin to be inside my center hub here. So I'm going to draw a circle from the global origin. And then I'm going to elongate this. Uh, maybe I'll shrink that down a bit. And then I'm going to elongate or resize the spline to fit that. Once, once I'm at this point, I can then go ahead and power trim away any other issues that I have to close up this loop. Perfect. Once I'm done here, I'll exit the sketch and then it'll extrude this profile all the way to the outer bounds of this fin. So all the way below here and up above the fin here. And then I'll use a, and then I'll use a mesh fit surface to cut them away. So first I'll go into model, I'll choose a solid extrude, select my profile, make sure that it's above my fin, select opposite direction, make sure that it's below my fin, which it is, make sure that it's not merging, then I'll create it. So here is my fin profile. I'll go ahead and turn off this first part here. Now I need to apply a surface to the mesh. So I'll select Mesh Fit. I'll select this region here. Go to the next step. If I need to adjust the UV mapping, I can here. And I'll just move this just a bit away from that divot there. And then I'll go to the next step. And I'll take a look and I'll see that I want to get rid of probably this line and maybe this line down here, in the, this line in the middle. And maybe I want to move these just a, a bit out of bounds so that there is no issues here. So pull these back a tad and pull this one a little bit away. And pull this one back too. Good. And then I'll say OK. Then we can check the fitment of this surface to the mesh by selecting our deviation analysis. We can see that we're in a really good shape. So I'll go ahead and turn that off. I'll turn off my first mesh fit, and then I'll just repeat that on the back side here. So again, I'll go to the next step. Maybe play with the UV map if I need to. I'm going to move this just a bit out of the way, try and get that divot right in the middle of that square there. Go to the next step and then just adjust it a tad bit more. So maybe getting rid of a couple lines if I have to. Maybe moving out a couple lines if I need to as well. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Now I'll use these two as cutting tools from my solid piece here. Oop, not that solid piece. So to start, I'm going to use this surface. I'm going to go up to cut. So my tool entity is going to be this surface. My target body is going to be this solid body. Going to the next step, and I'll choose what I want to remain. And then I repeat that process on mesh fit 2. Again, I'll go up to cut. My tool body is going to be this surface. My target body is going to be this solid body. Then I'll go to the next step here. My remaining piece is going to be the fin, and I'll say OK. I'll turn this off, turn on my other solid body, and here you have a 3D, uh, a 3D feature from the mesh. Then it's just a matter of repeating this body here, and I'll go over to Patterns, select my body, and the Rotation piece, I'll select Vector 1, or uh, Rotation Axis, I'll select Vector 1, have it set to 3, that's what I'm looking for, and I'll say OK. Cool. So now I have now I have four different pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and combine them together. I'll go up to Boolean, and I'll select Merge. Now I have one piece, and I'm well on my way to reverse engineering this entire piece. Um, and with that, I'll go ahead and back, hand it back to you guys. Thank you very much. This concludes the webinar in Handheld Scanning and Reverse Engineering, How to Recover from a Damaged Boat Propeller Using Artec 3D EVA and Geomagic Design X. Please join us for the rest of the segments in our series, Digitize for Design and Inspection. And remember, with Indicate Technologies, when producing high quality parts at the lowest possible cost is your mission, making solutions easy to deploy, manage, and scale is ours. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.